a chef is my absolute passion. And cooking up science recipes is my speciality. I'm Busta Beaker, and this is Cooking with Science. Oh, hello. Welcome to Cooking with Science. I'm Busta Beaker. <laughs> Delicious. Nothing is more important to have fresh than your seafood. It's what makes the difference between a fresh fish... <laughs> ah, and one that isn't so fresh. <laughs> <coughs> If you live by the ocean, you probably know that the water gets high tide and low tide. Look closely, it's the same location. Amazing! Oh. But did you know that this is caused by the gravity of the moon and the sun? Say this cookie is the Earth. And this little happy fellow is me. Hello! <laughs> and this string represents the water around the Earth. If we didn't have gravity to worry about, the water would all be equally deep around the Earth. But here comes the moon, this mushroom. Now, the moon has gravity, and that pulls the oceans towards it a little bit, like this. And that creates high tide there, and low tide here, and a little bump of high tide on the other side of the Earth. And as the Earth rotates and I'm on it, I experience low tide and high tide and low tide and high tide. Very interesting. But there's another factor. The sun, or this lemon. Now, the sun also affects the tides, but not as much as the moon. Now, the sun does not affect the tides as much as the moon because it's much further away, but it still has an effect. If the sun was here, then the tides would be pulled away a little bit like that, and the tides would be less severe. But if the moon and the sun line up, like over here, you'd get a very, very high tide and very, very low tide. So there you are. That's how the tides are affected by the gravity of the moon and the sun. Mmm, delicious. I'm Buster Beaker, and thank you for joining me on Cooking with Science. Oh. The Wizard Academy. All you have to do is demonstrate true magic and you will be granted entry. Well, Fuzzix, who is the next applicant for the Wizard Academy? Overwhelmo. Indeed it is I, Overwhelmo. And prepare to be overwhelmed. Would you be flabbergastified if I balanced this coin on its end? Not really, no. But would you be impressed if I was to balance this coin on top of this coin! Possibly. Prepare to be flustered and stupefied. Stupid. Stupid flustered as I balance three coins on their ends on top of this glass. Well, that certainly would seem like magic. Let us see. Okay. No pressure, Overwhelmo. You can do this. And now, I say, a magic word. A magic word! Ha 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 ha! And now you must let me into your academy. Wait. What's under the cloth? What what cloth? This cloth? Nothing! Oh! Is that a magnet? This? No! The pull of the magnet is what's keeping those coins up. The magnet is just strong enough to keep the coins from falling. No! This is set set dressing. It's just for... It was a good trick, but it's science, not magic. Well, yes. And you will see! You will see! I will be back! I, Overwhelmo, will return! And I will do such magic that you will need extra socks, because I will knock them off! With my magic, you will need at least two pairs of socks, maybe three pairs of socks. We can still see you! No, you can't! Anthony and I are maxing out the spool racer. We start with a long coil of bungee cord, which is kind of like a giant elastic, and feed it through the spool. Then we put on a big piece of plastic to act as our washer and use a long pole as the pencil. We flip the spool on its side to wind it up. Then we flip it back and it's ready to go. All right, so we have it all wound up and we're ready to try it again, but with one change. Uh, Phil. Yeah. What's with the trike? 
I ride the trike. It's like I always say, what's the point of building something big if I can't ride it? There's no way you're gonna fit on this thing. No, no, I don't, I don't put my feet on the pedals. I put my feet here on the back, right? And okay, then, yeah, I get then, it, I get it. You got it? Uh, hold, hold on, I gotta do my helmet up. Safety first. You ready? I'm on it. Okay, three, two, one, go. Oh, it's working. It's working. <laughs> Amazing. All the stored energy in the bungee cord is being released and the spool starts to turn. There's even enough energy that I can get pulled along behind it. It's not going that fast no, though. And it's... it's pretty good though, it still pulls me. Right? Yeah, pretty good. So, spool racer actually able to get pulled by it. Yeah. You know what, I think we can go even bigger. Bigger? Yes. Well, what did you have in mind? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> what is this? What this you... is an industrial cable spool, and this is the biggest size that they make. <laughs> and I thought we would do the same thing with this. What do you think? I think this could generate a huge amount of energy. Okay, so all we gotta do is just build it just like we built that other one. Just bigger. Except way bigger. Let's do it. <laughs> Being a chef is my absolute passion. And cooking up science recipes is my speciality. I'm Buster Bika, and this is Cooking with Science. Ah. Oh, hello! Welcome to Cooking with Science. I'm Buster Bika. Whenever friends come over, I like to make my famous potato chip recipe. And look at this bag of potato chips. Quite large, there must be a lot of potato chips in here, right? Well, let's open it. What? This potato chip bag is mostly air. Why do potato chip bags have so much air? Well, to tell you the answer to that, I have to tell you the story of two bags of potato chips. Here they are. This one full of air. And this bag of potato chips, there's not much air in it at all. Why don't they make them like this? Well, let's find out. First thing that happens is the potato chip bags come off the conveyor belt at the potato chip factory where they get packed into a crate. Here's a crate here. So let's really stuff them in. And then the crate gets boxed up and shipped off to the store. Oh, it's a bumpy ride to the store today. Now we're at the store. And then you come along. Ah, bags of potato chips. What else should I buy today? Oh, I know. How about a cantaloupe? Very nice. Some apples, yes? And take it home, walk along, and you get to the kitchen. You have a choice. This bag of potato chips, where all the potato chips are light and fluffy, or this bag of potato chips, which is not exciting at all. And that's why potato chip bags have so much air, to protect the potato chips from getting crushed. Speaking of potato chips, time to get back to my recipe. What is it? It's potato chip soup. Well, hi, Master Beaker, and thanks for joining me on Cooking with Science. Perhaps a little bit more cooking. <laughs> Okay, now nah, that's too far left. I don't know what you think. Oh, hey, I don't suppose you're going on vacation anytime soon. Well, if you haven't decided where, may I suggest underwater. But don't forget to pack the most important thing when you go. Hat? Nah. Ukulele? Nah, forget about it. Rubber chicken? No. Sunscreen? Forget about it. Teddy? No, if you're going underwater, the most important thing you've got to pack is air. Hmm? You see, human beings have been coming up with ways to go underwater for a long time. But the thing is, you've got to bring air with you because, you know, breathing is, is good. <gasps> Check this out. It's a diving bell! One of the first ways humans used to be able to take air with them when they went underwater. You see, it's a big heavy bell and it's lowered from a ship above on a rope. And when it gets lowered into the water, it traps a bubble of air underneath. So you can swim around underwater, but then when you need to breathe again, you don't have to go all the way back up. You just pop under the bell and take another breath. <sighs> 
bells like this were actually much bigger when they used to use them for diving to hold more air. Huh? Ring-a-ding-ding. -ding. What do you think? You want this? No? Uh, it's OK. I got something else. Hold on. Check this out. It's an old-timey diving suit. Air is pumped in through these hoses here, which means the diver has a constant supply of air, which means he can stay underwater longer. What do you think? You, like, no? OK, hold, hold on. I got something else. I got something else. Uh, um, uh, yeah. This is it, the ultimate in bringing air with you. The scuba suit, this tank, holds compressed air, which means it can carry a lot of air with you, which means you can stay underwater for longer. So I'll tell you what, I'll wrap up all three things. What do you say? Yeah, you'll take them? Okay, great. Let me just wrap them up for you. Come on, Teddy, let's go find the bag.